Hello and welcome to Placentia's Champions Sports Complex. This video is designed to help you, the coaches and the managers, to better do field prep for the three baseball fields here on the sports complex. The sports complex has two different types of fields. Jensen and March are the two smaller fields. And then we have Munoz up on the hill, which is the larger field. Now the way you do field prep for all three fields is pretty much the same. But there's going to be some variances here and there between these two smaller fields and Munoz up on the hill. And we'll show you that during this video. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking to yourself, I've been doing field prep on these fields for many years. I know what I'm doing. You're probably right. You probably do know what you're doing. But the reason for this video is to make sure that we're all doing the same thing at the same time in the exact same way. I may show you something that's a little bit different that you haven't done before. I may show you a technique that you haven't thought of before, but let's make sure we watch this video in full and that we all adopt these new rules and principles for getting these fields done. All right, so let's get started. We're going to go over the basic steps first, and then we'll go into detail on how each step is performed. Now, first, I want to apologize if my voice is uh, staticky or crackly. You know, this field has a big cell tower, and that cell tower is just flooding the area with interference. So we're doing our best on the audio. So please accept my apologies if my voice is crackling or you're static in the line. But anyways, to do the field prep for March and for Jensen is pretty much identical. Munoz has a couple of different steps. So we'll go through those in detail in just a little bit. But the steps for doing the field prep are identical. So the first thing you want to do is you want to remove the pitching mound cover and then you want to groom the pitcher's mound. Second step you want to do is you want to use the hand rake and you're going to want to hand rake both the inside and the outside lip of the infield, including around the fence. The basic idea is we don't want to use the drag net against the fence or against the grass and the dirt. Okay. After we do that, we're going to water the fields. There's a couple of tricks I'll show you for watering the fields. And that's where you need two people, by the way, uh, especially on Munoz. You can't water the field by yourself on Munoz. You need to have two people. Uh, after you water the fields, then we're going to drag the fields with the cart. Uh, after you drag the field, then we're going to um, locate the base pegs. After we locate the base pegs, we're going to chalk the field. And I'll show you some tricks on uh, chalking the field and locating base pegs. You know, put the bases in and we're pretty much ready to go. So, let's get started. All right, now we're going to talk about folding the mound cover. Now, in the past, I know a lot of you have just grabbed the mound cover and dragged it off. Well, the problem by doing that is you take the dirt with it. So I'm going to show you how to fold the mound cover here so you don't end up dragging dirt onto the grass and it becomes easier to handle. If you think about the circle here, divide it into thirds, okay? And we're going to basically fold this cover uh, into thirds and convert it from a circle into a square. So Josh, why don't you grab that over there? And again, two people really help. So you're going to bring this in right about there. So notice how he's grabbing the corners and he's bringing the corners together. Now we'll do the same thing from the back and the front. He's going to grab the corner, bring it forward. Then he'll grab the back here and he'll bring it forward again. Now look, we went from a circle to a square. Now at this point, we could just fold it just like anything else, like a beach towel or whatever. So just kind of fold it one more time, Josh. Okay. Make sure you grab the bottom. Good. So now we got the cover nicely folded and neatly um, ready to go. So now he can just pick it up and he can move it over to the uh, dugout. All three pitching mounds have two actual rubbers on the mound, the front rubber and the back rubber. So depending on which league you're on, depending on which mound you want, you may need to cover one of these mounds. The trick for doing the mound is you always start from the grass and you work your way up. Okay, so you start here from the grass lip, you work your way up, moving the dirt from the grass up to the pitching area. 
pound the dirt down so it's nice and uh, and uh, and hard for the pitchers, and you're ready to go. Now that we got the pitching mound uh, uncovered and we got it properly groomed, now we have to groom the infield. This is where things get different. In the past, we would just grab the drag rake and start drag raking the field. The problem with doing that is that's when we started to get the lip because we had dirt pushing onto the grass or vice versa. And this is where things get different. Now, because of the way the fields are designed, the way the fields are groomed, we're now going to use the hand rake and we're going to hand rake the inside lip and the outside lip first with the rake and then we'll go back and we'll drag it. Okay? So the trick is you got the, um, the, uh, the, the tips here and you got the flat edge. We're going to be using the flat edge, not the, uh, not the grace, but the flat edge. Put the rake 40, uh, 90 degree angle like this or a little bit out. The idea is to push the dirt away from the grass, okay? So we're gonna start here, we're simply gonna walk and drag the dirt away. So now we got the uh, infield all dragged, we'll do the same thing for the outside line as well, including around the fence. Now the reason why we're doing it around the fence is that we don't want to have these nasty little edges of the fence snagging our drag net. That's what's been killing our drag nets are these little edges of the fence here. Now one trick, you don't have to push down real hard. I'm pushing down just a little bit here just to keep it on the ground, but we're not like forcing it down here. We're just letting it, the weight of the drag do its thing. For Munoz, raking the field has something a little bit different, and that is with the first base and third base lines, you can't use the cart with the drag net. Instead, you're gonna use the hand rake and just like with the infield, you're going to just rake it at a uh, 90 to 100 degree and just kind of rake on both sides and get the infield done that way. So let me show you what I'm talking about. When you get the home plate, again, you shouldn't be using the cart with the drag net. You're going to do what's called a circle drag around home plate to get home plate ready. So let me show you what that looks like. And that's it, the difference for Munoz. Okay, behind each of the pitching mounds in all three fields is the water hole. Every hose that's in a bin is going to have what's called a water key. The water key has a little ball valve here. All you're going to do is put the water key into the hole here, and you're going to twist it. Now, my suggestion is before you twist this, take the hose, extend the hose out, and make sure the nozzle is closed. The nice thing about these nozzles is these nozzles give you different water patterns. If you twist it, you can have a big wide, twist it more, and you got a uh, more of a straight one. When you're watering, the trick is to do a very light, dusty water. You don't want puddles. You don't want to create any lakes. You just want to create a nice water stream. Now one of the reasons why I say it requires two people 
to do the fields is because of what's happening right here with the hose. If you go ahead and look at the pitching mound, you'll see that the hose is dragging over the pitching mound right now. That's where a second person comes in handy. That second person can actually hold the hose and make sure it doesn't drag over the pitching mound. For Munoz, watering the field does take two people. That's because the hose can't squirt all the way from the grass to the outside grass. You're going to have one person manning the nozzle and another person kind of uh, monitoring the hose, making sure the hose doesn't drag on the dirt. Let me show you what I'm talking about. And while you're watering the infield, just take a little time and water the grass too on all three fields. This poor grass gets beaten to death, so take the few minutes just to give this grass a good soaking. Uh, not too much soaking, just a little bit of water, make it look nice and fresh. When you're done watering the fields, do not close the tip. Because if you close the tip and you try to unplug the key, you get squirt right in the face. When you're done watering, you're, you're going to wind up the hose. Let me give you a little tip about winding up the hose. Start with the key. Put the key on the ground and then wrap the hose in a circle around the key. So notice now when I'm doing the hose, I'm twisting the hose as I'm going along. Make sure the hose doesn't kink. All right, so the hose is all nice and twisted and ready to get stored back into the bin. All right, now that we got the uh, field hand raked, both on the outside lip against the fence, the, the, against the uh, grass here, we got the infield all hand raked, you can now see we've got a clear path uh, that we could follow for our dragnet. So there's two types of dragnets that you could do. You could do a straight dragnet or you could do a circle rake. A circle rake does take longer to do. So if you're in between games, I would say do a regular drag rake. Um, if you're at the beginning, like the very first game, probably a circle rake would be a good idea. But if you're in between two games, then do a quick uh, drag rake, okay? Now you notice I have the cart and I have the drag, the, the drag in the field. You want to start this in the field. Don't start in the grass and then from the grass transition to the field or don't start from the field and transition out to the grass. You always start in the field and you always end in the field. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started doing the uh, drag again. You'll notice that when I got to the outside edge here and also on the inside edge that I took my time and deliberately slowed down. I want to make sure that I do not drag the uh, drag net uh, uh, against the grass. I want to make sure I stay within a, about you know, a good inch or two or even a foot or two if possible away from the edge here. Okay. <laughs> get to the field early in the morning and the field is all um, wet and mildewy and all that kind of stuff from the uh, sprinklers or whatever, then drag first and then water. If it's in the middle of the day when the field's all dry and it's hot, then water first and then drag. So it really depends on the condition of the field. Again, if the field is already wet, then go ahead and drag first and then water. If the field is super dry, there's been some gains on it already, then go ahead and water first and then drag.
On all the fields, I have placed white markers onto the fence, indicating different positions that you need to be aware of. The white marker that's over here on this fence is a marker for the third base line. We also have one for the first base line as well. And we also have markers that indicate where first base is and where third base is. So right now, I'm going to show you a trick on how to make your third base and your first base foul lines. First thing you need to see is we have on every field one of these chalk lines. Each of these machines have a little button. When you push the button, that releases the chalk line. So now let's go ahead and use this chalk line to mark the third base foul line. All right, so first things first, we'll take the hook that's on here. We're going to place it on that white marker, and then we're going to walk all the way down. All right, you'll know you got the line perfectly lined up when you see the chalk line go right over home plate, right along the edge of home plate here. That's when you know your chalk line is perfectly lined up with the foul pole. Every field here has these base frames. This is for the battery boxes. You'll notice that one end is long and one end is short. The short end goes to the pitching mound. The long end goes to the backstop. This piece right here, this goes along the side of home plate. So we're going to put these down right now so we know where our chalk line is going to be. The one thing to keep in mind, the foul line does not have to hit the corner of the base, um, the, the battery box here. Okay, if you ever watch Major League games or whatever, you'll notice that the line does not hit the corner. So you'll notice if it doesn't hit the corner, that's fine. It's not supposed to. Now we're going to walk this and get our line. Now that we got our line, let's go ahead and chalk. Chalk does not belong on the grass. When you get to the lip here, you stop. Do not run chalk into the grass all the way to the foul pole, okay? We'll do our best to paint these lines as often as we can. But if there's no line, then please do not use chalk on the grass because that will kill the grass. All right, last thing we got to do in the fields is kind of draw a circle for the batter's box. And that's basically it for the chalking of the field. All fields have also been marked with a fence with white paint indicating where first base and third base pegs are. So if you look and you can't find a peg, Simply look towards the fence, look for the white marking on the fence, and that'll help you give an indication of where the peg is. You could also use your chalk line for that as well. In fact, if you put the chalk line on the fence, go over the first or third base peg, you'll actually find second base. Every base peg should have a base cap on top of the base peg. Do not remove this black base uh, top. Keep the base, keep this on top of the base pegs to prevent dirt from getting inside the base pegs. Now that we've uncovered the base pegs, so they put the bases onto the base pegs and you're ready to go. All right, and there you go. That's how you do the proper field prep here for Placentia's Champions Fields. Hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to contact the city and they'll be able to answer any questions you have. If you're with Placentia Pony, feel free to reach out to the field manager and ask him any questions as well. Thank you for your time.